Hi, I'm Hartmut. I'm here with Matthias Carlton at DevOpsCon in Munich. I think you had a wonderful session right now. Uh, you talked about team organization, team collaboration, team structures, and you presented some team topologies. So why is it useful to have a set of different team, team topologies? Well, what we found is that um, there are many different ways in which teams can work effectively together. Um, there are many ways in which teams can be very ineffective when, when, when they're set up in certain ways. Um, there isn't really one uh, single kind of team structure or, or pattern for collaboration that works. It depends on what the business purpose is, depends on what the, the organization is trying to achieve. Depends on uh, where they are with uh, technology adoption, depends on how quickly they're moving, um, all sorts of things like this. And so we, in, instead, of, instead of a very simplistic uh, approach which says, oh, development needs to talk to and collaborate with operations, that, that's a good starting point. But uh, what we've found is that we need to be more specific than that mm -hmm. and look for collaboration and interaction patterns that, um, that work in different contexts. So let's be a little bit more specific. What yeah. would be a good example of, of, of a team structure which matches the, 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 the needs of a company? Well, so if, if we, yeah, it's a very good, very good point. If, we're, if an organization is trying to discover something very quickly, so discover some new technologies, let's say they're moving from uh, virtual machines on uh, AWS to Kubernetes or something like that, then the, the people building the software, the application, the people who are providing some uh, infrastructure, perhaps they need to collaborate very closely at that point to really understand the operational uh, implications of taking on something like Kubernetes for their application. So having those teams work really closely together can be really valuable. But um, it can also be useful to not need to collaborate so closely. Because collaboration comes with a cost, because it's a kind of expensive, if you like, but it produces very good, very good results. Sometimes it's better to deliberately introduce a kind of, um, a kind of boundary between teams so that specifically uh, the product teams can simply rely on a platform uh, and deliver their stuff on top of the platform. And there's less need to collaborate with kind of IT operations at that point, because the hard problems have been solved. So the, the, the classic example is P Pivotal Cloud Foundry, where there's a, there's a hard distinction between uh, application and platform. And the reason that's there is because the hard problems have already been solved, so the application people can just deliver on top of the platform. So that's the sp specific kind of two, two of the main situations where we, where we think about different ways of teams interacting, depending on what they're doing. So you would say that collaboration is not a value um, in any situations? I think collaboration is always valuable, but we need to understand why we're collaborating and, and when to, what to collaborate on. Mm -hmm. Exactly what should we focus on collaborating on. But sometimes it might be better to codify certain things as a service mm -hmm. instead. Okay. So let's look at the broader context. We are here at the DevOps conference. Mm -hmm. You are talking about team structures. Yep. Uh, but team structures are not all. What what brings life into such yeah, right. structures? Yeah, it's a very good point. So just having a nice team structure carefully designed is not going to give you uh, kind of effective software delivery by itself. We need to look at um, the cultural aspects. We need to make sure we've got good sound engineering practices. And that takes some time to evolve. It's like we need an ecosystem, if you like. We need to nurture and, and care for that kind of culture to make the good engineering happen. Um, we need, I mean, ultimately we need to have uh, the business, the organization needs to have a very clear and well-informed picture of what it's trying to do. Because there's so many organizations that uh, haven't really validated their product or service idea. And so when they ask IT or, do, or engineering to build something, it's not clear what we should build. Because the, the business idea, the organization idea is not uh, clear, and, and we're, it's actually quite a common thing increasingly for people who organizations have adopted DevOps to, to become so good at the, 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 the technology part that actually it exposes that the business or organization aspect has a lack of clarity. That's kind of an interesting place to get to. Mm -hmm. So, what would be a good starting point? So we have a company traditional structures that now wants to achieve something, they hear about DevOps ideas, they hear about team topologies, 
What would you suggest? How to start? Where to start? So the, the important thing is to start, is to pick something that's, um, that's small enough that we can gain some traction, uh, but not trivial. Um, we need to get some buy-in from uh, senior management so that we're allowed to experiment on, on this, on kind of one stream, if you like. It might be one product, it might be one product area. Um, but we're expecting to learn a lot from doing that. We're expecting to um, not get it right first time. We're expected to do something wrong, but to learn very quickly from that. Um, we need to make sure that we... Uh, some people may feel left out at the start. We need to kind of bring them along by saying, look, don't worry, you're not in this team right now, but our plan is to, is to roll out this approach to you later on. So just wait a little bit, come to the lunchtime pizza sessions, learn about what we're doing, and over time we'll roll out this approach further and further to other teams. But trying to change the whole thing at the same time could work, but it's probably not the best thing for most organizations. Do you see this as a top-down process or, or more a bottom-up? There's a combination of, the, combination of both. We need to um, enable a very good engineering culture, a, a culture of learning and kind of safety for experimentation at the bottom, the bottom-up. We need to make sure that there are no individuals who Sometimes you get an individual who's very uh, maybe aggressive or people, uh, people are scared of them. Then we need to work out what to do with them, perhaps off to the side somewhere. Um, but also top down, it needs, it needs buy-in, it needs awareness from, from the, the management of the organization that this is something that's worth investing in. Um, so the combination of top down and bottom up is, is the right way. But often we want to start small and expand later rather than trying to do a big bang change. Um, sometimes that's needed, but more often than not, better to do it in a kind of stream and then expand from that. Okay, Matthias, thank you very much thank for you very this much. insight Thanks. and enjoy the conference. Thanks.